I've been sleeping at home, but my husband isn't here. I feel like he's lying to me. This all started back when I was pregnant with our first child. My name is Ashley, and I was expecting our first child after two years of marriage. I was nine months pregnant, with only one month to go before my due date. While I was excited about the baby, I was also nervous about childbirth and taking care of a child for the first time. I planned to go back to my parents' house for a while so they could help me. I mentioned this to my husband earlier during my pregnancy, but I thought he'd forgotten, so I brought it up again today. While watching TV lazily, my husband said, Oh, you mentioned going back to your parents' house. If you're going, just go, I won't have any trouble without you here. I was shocked by his dismissive words, but didn't want to argue. So I let it go. I told him, I'm going back this weekend. I'll give birth next month and will stay at my parents for one or two months. So I'll be back in about three months. Please make sure the house is ready for the baby. He replied, all right, I would have done it anyway. Then he added, oh, and I can't see you off this weekend because I have to work. I was disappointed. I had hoped he'd come with me to the station, but he didn't seem to care. I knew he was a workaholic, working even on weekends, but I wished he would consider how hard it would be for me to travel while being so pregnant and carrying a lot of luggage. I understood he was busy, but I felt lonely. I didn't want our baby to feel this way too. I also started feeling anxious about whether we could raise the child together. It's not just my baby, it's ours. When did he become so cold? With these thoughts in my mind, I started packing. Since I had time before going to my parents, I decided to send most of my luggage ahead using delivery services. Before my maternity leave started, I had cleaned the house from top to bottom, wanting everything to be ready for the baby. I had even set up the baby bed and was excited about our life as a family of three. But my husband kept making a mess in the house. He left half-finished drinks lying around and didn't clean up the packaging from the things he ordered online. It seemed like he still thought he was living alone. Maybe I cleaned too early, but it hurt to see all my effort go to waste. I realized that since we got married, I had never seen my husband cook or clean. Even though I kept tidying up, the house only got messier, and I started worrying about how things would be when I was away. But with the baby due soon, I focused on my upcoming childbirth. The weekend came quickly, and I left for my parents' home. My husband didn't even see me off as he went to work. While I relaxed at my parents' house, I stayed in touch with him. We exchanged emails every day and talked on the phone every few days. But over time, he stopped answering my calls more often. When I asked him why, he'd give vague answers like, well, yeah, or not really. Jokingly, I asked, you're not cheating on me, are you? I've heard men often cheat when their wives are pregnant. He replied irritably, no, why would I? It's annoying to be doubted. His irritated tone made me uneasy, so I quickly apologized. I didn't want unnecessary worries while carrying our child. I decided to trust him. A few weeks later, my labor pain started. As I prepared to go to the hospital, I called my husband, even though I was embarrassed to show my pain. I wanted him to be there for the birth. I said, the labor has started. It usually takes about half a day for the first baby so you can still make it. I want you there when our child is born, and you can even cut the umbilical cord. To my surprise, my husband sighed and said, you want me to take the train right now? Sorry, I'm tired, and I have work tomorrow. I was shocked. You're still talking about work. Our child is being born, and you're prioritizing work. He snapped back, shut up, there's no one to replace me at work. If I don't do it, it won't get done. Can't you understand that? I'm hanging up. I tried to convince him to come, but he cut me off. Tears filled my eyes as I endured the labor pains. Feeling alone, how could my husband be so indifferent to the birth of our child? From the moment a mother finds out she's pregnant, her child becomes her priority, but he seemed to feel nothing. I gave birth to a beautiful baby boy after a full day of labor. He was so tiny and precious. My parents showered him with love and they taught me how to care for him. After a month, I was already used to bathing and taking care of the baby. My parents grew concerned and asked me, 
Are you really okay with a husband like that? My parents were worried about me after they went back home. I tried to reassure them, saying I was managing well and recovering faster than expected. I thought I might go back home next week. They reminded me not to push myself and to let them know if anything went wrong. They often say that after childbirth, a woman's body feels like it has been in a car accident. But I felt good thanks to the hormones. I was getting used to taking care of my baby, so I decided to return home earlier than planned. While at my parents' house, I had little contact with my husband, even when I sent him photos and videos of our son. He didn't react much. I thought maybe a father only feels like one when he interacts with the baby. I tried to stay positive. When my parents dropped me off at home, I didn't tell my husband I was coming back. Since it was his day off, I wondered how he would react to seeing our child for the first time and if he would like our home. After a few hours of driving, we arrived home. I carried my son while my parents handled our luggage. But when I unlocked the door, we were greeted by a dark, silent room. Hey, no one's here, I said, as I entered the living room. A foul smell hit us, turning on the light revealed a shocking sight. The room was a mess. Dirty dishes and half-eaten pizza filled the sink. Clothes and trash were everywhere, and mold floated in half-drunk juice. The table was covered in stains, and the bathroom was full of black mold. The toilet was dirty, and in the crib we had prepared for our son. There were cardboard boxes and garbage bags piled up. I had asked my husband to keep things clean for our baby, but it was a disaster. I felt devastated, there was no way we could raise a child in such a filthy home, and I was especially upset about the state of the crib. This is unacceptable, what's going on? I exclaimed. My parents were furious and searched for my husband in every room, but he was nowhere to be found. Where could he be on his day off? Maybe he was working another weekend shift, but I was starting to doubt him. His job didn't require weekend work, and he was supposed to follow the calendar. Let's try calling him, my parents suggested. We couldn't stand in such a messy house any longer. I stepped outside with my confused parents and called my husband, but he didn't answer. On my third attempt, he finally picked up. Hey, where are you now? I asked. I'm sleeping at home. He replied. Why at home? I pressed. We had searched the whole house and hadn't seen him. Was he buried under the mess? His tone didn't sound like he had just woken up. Then, I heard a woman's voice in the background. I couldn't hear her clearly, but it was definitely a woman. In that moment, it hit me, he was cheating on me. I couldn't believe he would do this while neglecting our child. The house was a disaster, and he was being unfaithful. I felt furious. A father like this was unnecessary for our son. If he cared so much for this other woman, he could have her. Suddenly, I thought maybe a burglar had broken in. I needed to report this to the police. Huh? You at your parents' house? He asked, confused. My anger boiled over. You're lying about being at home. It's unacceptable to turn the crib into a dump. I'm not coming back. We are getting a divorce. I said quickly before hanging up. I reported a burglary to the police to punish him. I told my parents and son to go back to my parents' house while I waited for my husband in front of our home. The police arrived before he did. I welcomed them inside like guests. When my husband finally showed up, he had a woman with him. His face showed panic. You weren't supposed to be back yet, he exclaimed. Who is she? I asked, glaring at the woman, who stood with her arms crossed. Despite the situation, I felt strangely calm. I asked the woman questions and learned that my husband had been seeing her while hiding our marriage. I was so disgusted by him that I didn't know how to react. Let me explain, my husband pleaded, trying to grab my shoulder, but I slapped his hand away. Don't touch me, it's disgusting. The police are checking the room right now. I hope you're embarrassed by the mess you made. I'm leaving, you can explain everything to the police. Goodbye. I headed back to my parents' house, leaving my husband and his mistress stunned. He called numerous times, but I didn't answer. That night, I finally responded. Apparently, he explained the situation to the police and came home looking troubled. The police must have had a hard time dealing with the awful smell and the mess. He brought this on himself. Now, 
All he had left was his shame and a ruined home. Come on, I'm sorry, please come back, I've been looking forward to seeing our son. My husband pleaded, if he truly felt sorry, he should have come to my parents' house to apologize in person. Instead, he thought a phone call would fix everything, showing just how terrible he really was. I couldn't imagine a future with him, he had never cared before, and he wasn't there when I gave birth, even after I asked him several times. Well, I thought you knew I would be there, he said, I'll clean up the room, I can't do household chores without you, I need you. I could hear him getting more desperate on the other end of the line, but no matter how much he begged, I wasn't changing my mind, you should have kept that woman, if you can't handle housework, have her do it for you. It was just a fling, you're the only one for me, Ashley, he insisted. A fling, you saw her every time you said you had to work overtime. Well, that's a different story, he mumbled, and eventually confessed he had cheated on me with multiple women from high school after reconnecting at a friend's wedding. He was a scumbag, there was no point in continuing the conversation. I felt chills as I listened to him desperately apologize, nearly in tears. I can't believe this, you disgust me, were you planning to touch our son with those hands? I won't do it again, I'll come pick you up right now, I want to see you and our son. I'll prove my sincerity, let's go home together. I couldn't believe his audacity, I can't trust you, there's nothing more to talk about, I'll raise our son on my own. Please forgive me, Ashley. I hung up before he could finish, the call ending with a hollow silence, that was the end of our short marriage. Half a year has passed since then, I decided to start working and relied on my parents for support. Once I save enough money, I plan to leave their house and live on my own with my son. I am currently negotiating the divorce with my husband, mostly to secure alimony. He seems unable to manage household chores and eats out most of the time, leaving his house a mess, but that's no longer my concern. I'm focused on giving my son all the love I can.